Recently, I made a video talking about the future direction of the Spider-Man franchise. That video came out before No Way Home. Funnily enough, a few predictions I made in that video came to pass, graduating Peter being my biggest one. Well, they did that. They got rid of his help, his friends, whether it be Ned, Stark, Happy, Strange, or the Avengers. This forces Peter into making a handmade suit living in a dingy apartment, making Peter a truly solo hero, moving his character closer to the comics or the PS4 game setting him up for a new trilogy in a soft reboot kind of way. In a way, this first trilogy being a three movie origin story, a boy wanting to be a hero, a boy learning the weight of that heroism and that responsibility, and then finally in No Way Home learning their sacrifices involved in that responsibility. No Way Home was able to recontextualize the last two Spidey movies to make it a long origin story. So only now are we really seeing the real Spider-Man. As I just said, I made a video discussing the possibilities for that next trilogy, Venom looking extremely likely after that end credit scene. An interesting comment on that video sparked up a fun idea though. The thought of Peter encountering his universe's Norman Osborn. Would he be suspicious of him? Would he be hostile or cautious towards Norman off the bat? Nowhere Home gave us a lot of great opportunities, opening us up to a lot of potential stories by having the world forget about Peter Parker. Something that is a staple of Spider-Man's relationship with other heroes though, is his relationship with Doctor Strange, the Fantastic Fantastic Four and Daredevil among others, but mainly it's these guys. Now we've seen the Doctor Strange team up in No Way Home, so there's no reason to revisit that there and double dip. As for the Fantastic Four, they have their movie coming up. I would love if by the end of the movie, Spider-Man swings by the Avengers Tower, which has been converted into the Baxter Building, and says hey to the Fantastic Four and specifically Johnny. Establishing the friendship between the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man would be great, as it was Spider-Man's first team up in the comics as well. So translating that here would be a nice nod, and perhaps in a Fantastic Four for sequel, we can have Spidey co-star as we get a future foundation Spider-Man. Regardless, this leaves us with Spidey's friendship with Daredevil and what I think should be the meat of Spider-Man 4. With Kingpin returning in Hawkeye and his and Daredevil stories possibly continued in Echo or She-Hulk, I think those stories should culminate in a movie, not a series. And what better movie than Spider-Man 4? Elevating all these characters to the big screen. I want to pay off what these characters have been leading to and at the same time introduce new characters for this next trilogy. For this trilogy, we're calling Spider-Man 4 Turf Wars. That's crap. Something Homecoming was able to do that I really liked was their treatment of... At his best, he was just a crook, involved in petty crime and whatnot. It was villains like Toombs and the Teased Gargan that made me excited to see the street level kind of villain on screen that we might see others like Hammerhead and Tombstone, or even heroes like Punisher and Daredevil. So exploring that in a solo movie where Spider-Man takes on a criminal empire will be a lot of fun. Not just petty crime and some theft like we saw with the Vulture, but organized crime, a business of never-ending robberies, shady deals, and corruption. For Kate, I think she's had her fair share of Kingpin after episode six of Hawkeye, but if not, then we can work her into the story too. But for Spider-Man and Daredevil, this is one of their biggest villains, a villain that rarely loses who has an iron grip on everyone in New York, and I want Spidey to feel that. I want this to be their movie. For Daredevil, this rivalry is built for three seasons, but for Spidey, we need to establish what a threat Fisk is. In this movie, I want to see Spider-Man fight crime, but feel like he's constantly losing, that the crime just never stops, as if the crime is organized. I want to translate the motives from Tombstone in this scene to Kingpin. I want a scene where Kingpin explains to Spider-Man what a problem he is, that he's making a dent in his criminal business, but as long as he keeps making villains for Spidey to fight, then Spider-Man always loses. Now, how would Kingpin create villains for Spidey to fight? Well, that's because Kingpin will employ the MCU Norman Osborn to do so. Looking at the events of Far From Home and Nowhere Home, they take place immediately after the blip. Continuing with this, we can say it's been a couple years since Nowhere Home. Peter can be absolutely smashing crime for a year or so. Street level crime has plummeted because of his presence. We start to see the effects of a Spider-Man that is a responsible hero smart and sharp whilst learning to have fun with it, to tease bad guys and so forth. Regardless, Norman Osborn, who has slowly rebuilt New York after the blip as just a casual businessman, he's established his own research industry called Oscorp, a la something in the vein of Stark Industries. Now doing this in 2026 would mean what Norman said in No Way Home, set in 2024, about there being no Oscorp, still stands. There was an MCU Norman, but he wasn't the Norman we know, the one we'll come to see just yet. So with Oscorp being a new player in New York, Fist takes control of the new meat, so to speak, forcing Osborne to make powered suits to keep Spidey busy or he will tell the press about his illegal money shit and the stuff he did to get so rich so quickly during the blip. So right now Norman is pigeonholed into creating bad guys for Fisk. This shows us that Fisk really does have everyone under his thumb. 
a true kingpin. It would also set Norman up as a shady guy, willing to do illegal shit to get what he wants. Regardless, in Homecoming, the Scorpion was teased, but it never amounted to anything, so perhaps Matt Gargan finally suits up as a Scorpion to take on Spidey. As we know in The Spectacular Spider-Man, it will be a distraction for Spidey so Kingpin's thugs can go about their petty crime unencumbered by the webhead. If you really think Scorpion isn't enough, then giving the Shocker his real suit and not just some gauntlets would be great too. Maybe two villains is too much for Peter, and that's when Daredevil intervenes. A two-on-two -two ensues, and we get to see Spidey and Daredevil team up. Now, Noah Home really highlighted the importance of Spider-Man learning the lesson of consequence. That being a hero might be fun, but it has its price. It perfectly sets Peter's story up as a hero that wants to do things on his own. That way, no one around him will ever get hurt again. Not being able to live through experiencing something like May all over again. So having him team up with Daredevil in this, we'll have to be very careful he doesn't unlearn that lesson, that he doesn't become dependent on other heroes for help again, like he was with Iron Man or Strange. I want scenes where they do team up, but show that Peter is completely fine on his own, that in some cases Spider-Man is pushing away Daredevil's help because he doesn't want people to be in danger, that he'd rather put himself in danger. I think the main lesson of this movie might be to be strong and independent enough to stand alone, but wise enough to accept help when it's there. As I said, the manufacturer of these suits is Osborne, and if there is a Norman, then there's always a Harry. At college, perhaps Peter makes some new friends for this next trilogy, Gwen and Harry perhaps? Gwen might get along with Peter in the brainy kind of way, geeking out about science, whilst Harry might be the cooler friend, still kind of dorky, but he wants to take Pete under his wing as the two really get along. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Peter. Perhaps Harry invites Peter to his place, a rooftop penthouse in York. Peter's kind of taken back by his wealth, which Harry never mentioned. Peter's smiling and whatnot whilst thinking about his tiny apartment. He gets a bit of a tour before he meets Norman who comes down some stairs, introducing himself to Peter. He says, nice to meet you, Peter. Norman Osborne. And that last name just hits Peter. He's hit with the realization that this is his universe's Norman. Peter is stunned in his own world for a second, reliving May's death. Norman saying, you look a bit pale, boy. Peter is then shocked out of that memory. Having scenes like this is really fun in storytelling. Peter doesn't yet know if Norman will become evil. Whilst he senses he's a shady guy, he has no reason to be on his ass, so to speak. It's also great over a trilogy seeing Norman be this ticking bomb in Peter's eyes before he becomes the goblin in the sixth movie. We have an amazing scene here, a dichotomy that oozes tension. Perhaps Peter shakes out of his memory and introduces himself, shows some smarts, to which Norman says to Harry, don't suppose you know this kind of physics, do you, Harry? To which Harry changes from this confident friend to a very shy son and says to his father, no, sir. So, because Spider-Man is thwarting Kingpin's operations, that gets the attention of Daredevil. Eventually, I would move the chess pieces of this movie to a place where Osborn wants Daredevil and Spider-Man to beat Kingpin because that frees him from his blackmail. So, he leaks some info that Murdoch gets a hold of. Eventually, we get it to a place where Daredevil is facing off against Kingpin and Spider-Man is taking on his muscle. Scorpion and Shocker. Daredevil might be on the verge of defeat, but Spider-Man helps him in his final hour. Resolving the movie with Kingpin finally out of the way and Norman free to make his business both Criminal Empire and Oscorp bigger than ever. What's the point of this video? Above all, what is the lesson of this movie? What's the journey? Why tell this story? Well, if the Home Trilogy was about establishing an origin for Peter, a boy that doesn't know consequence for his decision, that has to learn that lesson, with great power comes great responsibility, well, now we have to see that in action. Consequence for his actions. If Peter's cleaning up New York, we need to see the consequence of him doing that. That bigger and badder adversaries will arise to oppose that. A power vacuum, similar to the Dark Knight. When order moves too heavy in one way, a new chaos will rise to oppose that. I want to see a movie of texture, one that has weight, feels lived in. Now that Spider-Man has a voice, is on his own, I want to see that voice in the filmmaking. No more medium coverage shots. I want to see inventive camera movements that make the swinging feel grand, the dialogue feel emotional, a style that is identifiably Peter but feels raw and hopeful too. I want to see the signature of this Spider-Man, not some bland filmmaking. I want to see a movie that escalates the consequence of Peter being Spider-Man, the toll it takes on his relationships, how he disappoints people around him, promising to Gwen to be somewhere and just not showing, or maybe even something as simple as getting a little filthy whilst being Spider-Man. Oh, and I reek! Just for a bit of setup to seed an appearance in Spider-Man 5, somewhere throughout the movie, I would mention a cat burglar throughout the Daily Bugle, elusive to the police in Spider-Man, this mysterious person might just be too good. Perhaps there might be a line when Spider-Man confronts Kingpin. A discussion about Spidey's impact may occur. Fist says that you've managed to stop pretty much every petty thug in New York, that profits have plummeted. Spidey, in response though, says, yeah, except for your cat burglar. To which Kingpin replies, 
he's not one of mine. You can probably tell what we're setting up in the fifth movie, hopefully introducing the Black Cat, who will become an adversary and eventual ally of Spider-Man. Look, this is a kind of half-baked script idea, but I think right now all the moving pieces are in place right now to make this movie happen and make it make sense. A culmination for the existing characters tied to the Kingpin and Daredevil, and a new beginning for new characters in a new trilogy. New relationships, new friendships, new adversaries. As always, I want to hear what you guys thought of the video. Do you think Spider-Man 4 should be a Daredevil team-up, saving Spider-Man 5 for a Venom movie? Let me know what you guys thought of Spider-Man 4 below, and what you thought of my pitch. As always, I will see you guys in another video. Ciao.